Hello everyone, welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to make a fresh cheese soaked in olive oil, herbe de Provence and red pepper. It's called brousse. My name is Lionel and I cook traditional Provence dishes, all vegan. Provence is a southern region of France, reputed for its fragrant food. For each video, I choose traditional Provence dishes that are adapt and are modified to make them 100% plant-based. La Brousse is a fresh cheese typical of the southeast of France. Brousse is a very moist and grainy cheese with a more or less soft and crumbly texture. It is a cheese with a light, sweet and discreetly tart flavor similar to Italian ricotta. The cheese of Provence stand out for their characteristic flavors and smells. This fresh cheese variation is soaked in a mixture of olive oil, Provencal herbs and red pepper. Cheese in Provence not only had an economic function but also fulfilled a social role in the past. It was used as a currency for exchange. The word brousse means to beat or to mix. It's a cheese molded by hand with a rustic finish aspect. Let's have a look at the ingredients and utensils you will need to realize this recipe. I've listed down below the list of ingredients and utensils as usual in the description box. To realize this recipe, you will need 150 grams of raw almonds, blanched preferably. If you can't find blanched almonds, I'm going to show you how to remove the skins in this video. 100 milliliters of rejuvelac or filtered water. The rejuvelac will bring more complex flavor to your cheese. I highly recommend you to do it. The recipe is linked to the description box. Please note that the rejuvelac needs to be prepared ahead and it takes five days to make it. A fresh lemon from which you will extract three tablespoons of lemon juice, two tablespoons of olive oil, half a teaspoon of salt. 1 8 teaspoon of garlic powder or 1 peeled garlic clove a quarter teaspoon of white grinded pepper 1 tablespoon of rosemary sprigs 1 teaspoon of thyme 1 bay leaf 2 teaspoons of red pepper and some olive oil For the utensil you will need a high speed blender To obtain a smooth texture this type of blender is recommended a plate, a sieve, the tub that you use to drain pasta, a large piece of cheesecloth that can cover the sieve. A kitchen towel will also do. A 10 x 6 cm glass or plastic container with a lid. A small piece of cheesecloth the size of the glass container. You can also use a thin kitchen towel. A medium sized salad bowl, a fine mesh sieve, two small bowls of any shape, a lemon juicer, a mortar or a spice blender, a tablespoon, a spatula, and a knife. Pour the almonds into the salad bowl. Pour over enough water to cover the almonds. Let the almonds soak overnight. The almonds have been soaked in the water overnight or at least 8 hours. Massage them with your hands to weaken the skin. If your almonds are already peeled, of course you skip this step. After a few minutes, the skin starts to separate from the almonds. Place the two bowls in your working station and pitch each almonds that still have its skins on between your thumb and index to separate the skin from the almonds. Do them one by one. Rubbing the almonds properly will reduce the time needed for that step. If you keep the almond skins, your cheese won't have that typical cream color that cheese normally have. But if you don't mind, you can keep the skins. Then cut the lemon and juice it and put it aside. Pour the almonds into the blender. Add the rejuvelac or the filter water. Add the 3 tablespoons of lemon juice. Then add the olive oil. 
the salt, the white pepper, and finally the garlic powder. Start to blend at low speed first until the almonds are all broken down. Then stop the blender and scrub the container walls to incorporate the remaining hard bits to the mix. Start the blender and increase the speed to the point where the blades are still mixing the cream that's forming. If you increase the speed too fast, the blades are going to spin without touching the mixture that will result on a non-proper mix result. Here, my mixture is too thick, so I decided to add a bit of water to improve the blending process. The final mixture needs to be very very smooth and preferably without grainy texture, just like regular cheeses, and high spin blender can achieve this. If you use a regular blender, you probably have to blend longer. This step is important to have a very creamy cheese result. It takes around 5 to 8 minutes to complete the blending process. This is the most important step in the vegan cheese creation. You need a creamy smooth texture. When you see that the mixture has turned into a smooth cream, stop the blender and check the texture. As you can see, it's smooth, it's creamy and it's not grainy. The cheese cream mixture is ready to be drained. Place the sieve in your working station with a plate underneath and line the bottom with a large piece of cheesecloth. Pour the creamy mixture into it. Then close the cheese cloth by bringing the four corners together, twist them and tie them up tightly with an elastic. Put a salad bowl on top of it and press it down to squeeze the cheese mixture. Then add the weight of your choice the weight is going to help to extract the excess of moisture in the cheese mixture. You can see that the excess of moisture is starting to be expelled from the cheese mixture. You can clean the plate and put it back for the last day of fermentation. After two days of drainage and fermentation, your cheese is ready to be molded. At this stage, you could eat it like this and use it as a spread. Untie the elastic and open delicately the cheese cloth. Remove the sieve and put the cheese on the plate. The cream has firmed up and now forms a bowl. Take the small glass container and line it with a smaller piece of cheese cloth. The cheese cloth is going to absorb any excess of moisture. Delicately transfer the cream cheese bowl to the glass container. Press it with your fingers to make it take the round shape of the container. Scrape any leftovers of cream cheese and fold the cheese cloth over to cover the cheese completely. Cover with the lid and place the container into the fridge overnight or for at least 8 hours. In the cold, the cheese is going to firm up even more. After one night in the fridge, your cheese is ready. You can now finalize the cheese and add the topping. You need a serving plate to present the cheese and a bowl to mix the herbs. Start by grinding the rosemary using the mortar until you obtain small bits of herbs. Pour in the bowl. Do the same with the thyme. This process helps the herbs to release their fragrances. It smells absolutely delicious. Break roughly the bay leaf with your fingers as it won't really work efficiently in the mortar. 
add it to the bowl. Then finally, add the red pepper and give it just a light crush. Leave out the red pepper in the mortar for the moment. Remove the glass jar lid and open up the cheese cloth. Remove delicately the cheese and flip it on the serving plate. Separate delicately the cheese cloth from the cheese. Drizzle some olive oil on the cheese top and spread it out evenly with your fingers, on its surface and on its sides. Sprinkle the herb mix on the surface of the cheese. Then finally add the lightly crushed red pepper. Your cheese is ready to serve. Or if you want to keep it, cover it with a glass jar in the fridge for up to two weeks. So let's try this cheese and then let's see how it tastes. So I have a French baguette here, so I'm going to try it with this. Wow, the texture is like firm. Wow, the smell of the spices is really something. Okay, you can see it just spread exactly like cheese. Mmm, mmm. The texture is smooth. There is a tangy taste. It's impossible to tell it's made out of almonds. It just tastes like cream cheese. It has this distinctive taste that comes from the Rejuvelac that has this cheese smell. It's slightly fermented. It only fermented for 48 hours, so it's not pungent yet. You could make that cheese ferment longer and it will increase the fermented taste. Mm. It's really, really good. I want to try one with more spice. Okay, I want the topping. Wow, yeah. the mix of rosemary, laurel and thyme really gives that Provencal taste and that addition of the red pepper really brings a floral flavor to the mix. It's just so fresh and so vibrant. The olive oil also brings some freshness to the cheese. I hope you're going to try it and then see how not difficult it is to make vegan cheese. I hope you like this video. If you want to see more content like this, you just know what to do. Subscribe, like, and click the bell notification button to be notified for the next videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.